Hey you guys, what's up? It's RocketDust54 here, and welcome to the third episode of Criterion Roulette. Uh, this one came out a little later than I would have wanted it to, but um, uh, Criterion was having a 30% off sale for the entire month of May, which as of filming this on the, I think today's the 20, actually this calendar right here, 22nd, uh, it's still going on, it's for the entire month of May. Um, if you're in Canada, I would say go to the Unobstructed View website because Criterion's website itself, uh, they're kind of iffy when it comes to Canada. But Unobstructed View is a Canadian uh, distributor that is partnered with the Criterion Collection and they have sales at the exact same times they do for the same like discounts and all that. So I ended up getting four Criterions during this sale. Um, I thought this would be good for the next episode. And I'm going to be watching the first film of this episode tonight, which is The Virgin Suicides, released in 1999, directed by Sofia Coppola. Um, I've seen two Sofia Coppola movies before this, um, The Bling Ring and On the Rocks. And honestly, I was underwhelmed with both of them. Like, The Bling Ring had potential to be a really, really interesting movie but it just didn't reach its full potential I thought and also it it was kind of boring in parts when it really didn't need to be because I thought there was a very interesting story at its core um and then on the rocks wasn't all that bad but I just thought it was painfully surface level like and, and a big part of the reason of why it was even as good as it was is because Bill Murray is really good in that I think he saves it um but yeah, no, I've heard really good things about this one, and uh, yeah, don't, don't know too, too much about it. I know that there's um, a decent amount of uh, well-known people in here, but um, yeah, so we're going to take a look inside this one, and then we're going to pop it in. All right, so here's a look at the case right here. I really like the use of like uh, like the pink and like kind of red on the back. I really like the colors there, and then, oh god. There we go. I was going to say, uh, my criterion of Beyond the Valley of the Dolls was an incredibly hard case to open every single time. I was hoping this one wouldn't be like that, but there's the inside of the case. You got the disc artwork there, and then there's the pamphlet. There's that. And then uh, you got the title of the movie written a bunch of different ways in here. It looks really cool, actually. Re I really like that eye thing there. That looks pretty cool, too. All right, so... Yeah, let's put this one in, see how it is. Alright guys, so I just got done watching The Virgin Suicides, and man, I loved this movie. God damn, it was so damn good. Like, it really just grabs you in from the beginning and just immediately hooks you in. The, the, the performances were all really good. The cinematography is some of the most beautiful I have ever seen. Like, this is a 4K restoration on the Criterion Blu-ray. Watching this on my 4K TV, like, like, I haven't seen this movie before, but I can only imagine that watching this in 4K gives, like, new life to the movie, a whole new meaning to it. Like, every shot in this film was just bursting with life and personality. There was so much going on in every scene. It was incredibly well-directed. As I said, the other two Sofia Coppola movies I've seen, I was pretty underwhelmed by, but I was really, really impressed by this. And this was her first... Yeah, with this debut feature, it says on the back, this was her first movie... I mean, I'm sure she probably learned a lot about film from her father, who did, you know, the fucking Godfather and shit, but, I mean, even then, this is incredibly impressive for a debut feature, and it was really, just really, really engaging all throughout, like, the screenplay was very well written, as I said, it really just grabs you from the beginning and just really keeps you interested, um, but one thing I will say, it gets very, very melancholic near the end. Like, when I, I'm not even gonna lie, for a little bit after finishing this, like, my heart was hurting. Like, this movie gets really, really sad. Like, you feel as if you weren't even really watching a movie. You just, like, really feel for these characters. And, like, by the end of it, you just feel empty. 
which with a certain scene closer to the end is actually kind of applicable for what the director shows in the scene. I don't like really giving anything away when I talk about movies, so I won't say exactly what it is. But one thing I will say, though, is there's a scene near the end where they're in, like, um like a debutante, uh, like, like a debutante event. I don't know exactly what the hell they're called, but, um, they're in like a mansion where they're like having this event for debutantes and it has a very green color palette. Like everything is just a wash in a sea of green. I really, really loved that a lot because there's a scene earlier in the movie where they talk about handing out green pamphlets and they said, they're like, they decided to hand us out like green pamphlets instead of red pamphlets. Because, you know, like green was a, was a much cheerier color than red. It was really, it was cheery, but it wasn't too cheery. And without giving anything away, I think that really, really set the tone for the ending scene. Like it really gave meaning to it when you think, mm, yeah, it was almost like a little bit of like, a hidden, uh, a hidden message in there. I really want to say what it is, but I don't want to, as I said, I don't want to give anything away, but yeah, I, I just, I loved this movie so much. And, and the narration, the use of narration in this was really good. It was narrated by Giovanni Ribisi, who I think did a really good job. I think he was a great choice. Like the voice that he put for the narration, I just thought fit really, really well. It was, it, it was almost soothing in a way. Like it just seemed like, uh, it, and it was very natural. Like, it really felt like he was a good choice to, like, narrate this movie. But, yeah, overall, guys, I loved this film. And I cannot recommend it enough. Like, if you guys haven't seen this, you definitely need to check it out. Definitely, you know, one that you'll be thinking about. And I'm going to give this a high 4 out of 5. I loved this. Um, but, yeah, so hopefully see you guys uh, tomorrow when I uh, watch the second film in the Criterion Roulette. Uh, hopefully it'll be tomorrow. There's a chance it might not be. I was actually planning on starting the episode last night, but I didn't get any sleep the night before that. I was starting to feel tired, and I knew I wasn't going to be in the mood to watch anything for Criterion Roulette, so I decided to do it tonight. But um, yeah, so I'll see you guys in just a second when I watch the second film. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to say about The Virgin Suicides is that there is like four cast members from the Goosebumps TV show in this movie. There was, um, uh, AJ Cook played Mary, one of the sisters in the movie, because she was in the Don't Wake Mummy episode as the older sister. Um, and Hayden Christensen is in this as well, um, as one of the kids who's in the school. And who was the third? Um, oh yeah. Uh, Kristen Fairley, who was in the Go Eat Worms episode as the younger sister. And to top it all off, Mr. Todd Barstow himself, Noah Shabib, uh, who played Todd in the, in the Go Eat Worms episode, he's in this as Parky. And if you think the name Noah Shabib sounds familiar, then it's probably because you listen to a lot of Drake, because Noah Shabib is one of Drake's longtime producers. Yeah, holy shit. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because I forgot to say it when I was talking about the movie. But, yeah, there's, like, four members of the Goosebumps TV show that's in here, which makes sense because it was, like, all filmed in Toronto. But I still just thought that was really cool. All right, guys, so it is now the next day, and I'm going to be watching the second film in this episode of Criterion Roulette. Uh, this is the one that uh, my friend Christian chose for me, so thank you very much, Christian. Um, and I did not say this in the beginning of the video, I was not fully focused when I was recording the intro to this, uh, last night, but if you guys have never seen an episode of Criterion Roulette before, basically I buy three Criterions, uh, one that I choose, one that a friend chooses, and then I just generate a random spine number. Um, and yeah, The Virgin Suicides was the one I picked for myself, whereas, uh, this one is one that my friend Christian chose for me, and that is Blowout, released in 1981, directed by Brian De Palma. Um, I've seen a few of Brian De Palma's movies, and I've generally, uh, liked what I've seen. I've seen three of his other movies. Um, I've seen, uh, what was it? Carrie, which I absolutely love. I love Carrie so much. It's one of my favorite horror films, I think. Um, and I've seen Phantom of the Paradise, which... 
I wasn't, like, huge on, but I still thought it was an okay movie. Um, definitely was very creative. It was one that, like, it definitely has an audience, just one that I'm not really part of. Um, and the other one of his I've seen is The First Mission Impossible, which I don't really think is honestly that good of a movie, but it is kind of like a guilty pleasure. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, Christian has recommended me this one to watch. Uh, I'm excited to watch it because the plot sounds very interesting. It says that uh, John Travolta plays a guy who's like a, a sound effects guy for like Hollywood movies. And he believes he's like accidentally recorded a political assassination. So yeah, this seems like it's going to be really, really interesting. Um, Christian said that this is like one of Criterion's best releases yet. Um... And uh, it has on here an hour-long interview with Brian De Palma, which uh, Noah Baumbach conducted. Um, and it has one of De Palma's feature film, like one of his old feature films on here called Murder a la Mode. So I'll definitely be watching that at some point. Um, but yeah, now I'm actually going to throw you over to Christian because he has recorded something uh, explaining why he chose the film. And... Uh, yeah, he's going to be talking a little bit about it and explaining why he chose it. So I'm going to throw you guys over to him now. Hello, Christian here. You probably remember me as Killer Ball Films, but I barely upload on there anyways. So my recommendation for this episode of Criterion Roulette is Blout, uh, directed by Brian De Palma, one of my all-time favorite directors. Also directed my, currently my favorite film, Fam of the Paradise. And Blout was my... Um, further uh, exploration of his filmography since I was so captivated by Fan of the Paradise and I only seen Scarface at that time. And I know he's had quite a few films on the Criterion Collection like this and Sisters. So I was very intrigued and especially seeing another uh, John Travolta uh, performance uh, that could be interesting like uh, Pulp Fiction or Grease and this is probably my favorite performance from him. Like, he's able to sell the dramatic beat so well, and Travolta is known as a bit of a meme. Even with, like, Pulp Fiction, you love him because, you know, a, Vincent is, like, a very, like, um, exaggerated and a bit of a goofy character. Um, as for Blood, he takes a more serious role uh, than his other films, like, as I mentioned before, Grease or Face Off um, and all the action films he has been in. He takes a far more serious role uh, and a very humane role in Blowout, and especially his um, relationship with the uh, love interest, um, I thought was really damn strong. And um, humane-wise, it's one of the strongest points of the movie. Next to, of course, the cinematography, its uses of sound being obviously, you know, about a sound guy going down this assassination rabbit hole and conspiracy. Um, the cinematography, because... With uh, Brian De Palma, his work, especially in um, Dress to Kill, um, and Sisters, um, and just like a lot of his, like, um, a lot of his filmography involves scenes of like people stalking other people. Uh, I think about the Dress to Kill uh, mu art museum scene, for example, uh, that very much uh, sh showcases what he loves to do in those scenes, and there's tons of that blowout. And it's the first time I know it's just how well. Brian De Palma is at just like gripping your attention throughout those scenes and have you also kind of like lingering with the character either you're in the same position as the character being followed or you're in the same position as the character following them and following uh, that character and uh, lingering and um, voyeuring on them which is always a really cool thing um whenever he does that and get in a lot of his uh, filmography. Um, but yeah, no, Blowout is one of my absolute favorite, it is one of my all-time favorite movies. Um, I know this is a uh, rip on a film called Blow Up, which has a very similar plot with, but it says about a photographer who finds something odd with an image, uh, but I haven't seen that, so I can't comment anything about Blow Up. But even if I watch Blow Up, Blow Out is still going to be highly higher guard up there that like I don't really see this being topped by that film. And this is a film that will always be so endearing for me. And the criteria release for this is absolutely terrific as well. 
So I really hope you dig this Liam. Um, and also one thing I want to mention, the ending. The ending hits goddamn hard. The ending hits hard every single time. So yeah, that's my recommendation for this episode. Blowout. All right, thank you very much for that clip, Christian. Now we're going to take a look at the inside of the Blu-ray. This looks like a really nice case. You know, I like how it's like, you know, like this look, looking like this big, busy work set. And then John Travolta is just sitting in the back, like just like looking kind of exhausted. Like that looks like a really cool cover. Um, yeah, there's the back and then inside the case, uh, there's the disc. I think there's, yeah, there's a tiny bit of plastic that I didn't, I'll get it later. Um, and as with basically every criterion release, and I love seeing these in here, ugh. There's the booklet there. I always love seeing these. You know, really shows that they put some good care into their releases. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to pop this in and hopefully it turns out to be really good. Alright guys, so I just finished watching Blowout, and overall I liked it, um, but there's definitely a lot to take in and unpack, um, but as I said, I, I liked it overall, John Travolta was really, really good in this movie, I think, I, I honestly don't even think the movie would have been as good without him, I think this is definitely one of his best performances, I really liked his character, it seemed like he was acting differently than he did in a lot of his other movies, which was really refreshing. You know, I liked the idea of the story, um, Nancy Allen was pretty good too, there was good cinematography, um, as I, as I said, quite a bit to take in, um, and I think I would benefit from a second viewing on this one, just so that I can, like, fully wrap my head around everything, um, and that ending, by the way, was kind of crushing. Um, but it was it was done pretty well, I thought. Yeah, as I said, I really think I'll get the most out of this on a second viewing, but I did like it overall. Um, I would definitely recommend it, um, especially if you think that John Travolta is not a good actor, because I know a lot of people don't think he is. Definitely give this one a shot, because this is one of his better performances, I think. I don't think it was as good as something like, um, like Hairspray. I loved his performance in that. He was so funny. And uh, I haven't seen Grease in a few years, and I haven't seen Pulp Fiction in a few years either. I need to... I'm actually planning to re-watch all of Tarantino's filmography, because I haven't seen a lot of them in a while. But, um, yeah, overall, I liked Blowout. I would give this a uh, 3.5 out of 5. Um, I feel like this could probably go up higher with a second viewing. But uh, thank you again, Christian, for the recommendation. I definitely want to check out more of Brian De Palma's work. I'm, I think I'm probably... Like, depending on um, how Criterion Roulette goes or my, or whatever Criterion I decide to buy next, uh, I think I might want to see Dress to Kill next, because that one definitely interested me. But, um, yeah, so that is the end of that one, and I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow when I watch the last Criterion for this episode. So, see you then. Alright guys, so it is now the next day, and I'm going to watch the third and final film of this episode. This is the one that is the random spine number. I don't remember which one it was. Um, and I, don't, I and honestly, I don't actually like looking at the spine numbers until after I've like finished the movie and finished the special features because I like organizing them by spine number on the shelf. And I just have like this weird thing where just I like finding out the spine numbers like right at the end. So I'm like, oh, it's going to go right here. I don't know. I'm just weird like that. But the third and final film for this episode is Man Push Cart, released in 2005, directed by Ramin Barani. I really don't know much about this. It um definitely seems like it could be a pretty interesting movie. Um, but yeah, so as I said, don't really know too much about this one. Uh, we're going to take a look at this, and then we're going to pop it in and see how it is. All right, yeah, so here's the uh, front of it and the back. Definitely like the use of colors on the back. It almost looks like, it's like a bunch of like bronze and black. I just really like the way that looks. And the uh, front cover looks uh, pretty good, too. And then there's the disc. It's like a nice little sand color. And then here is the booklet for it. Um, but yeah, as I said, I know absolutely nothing about this. I have no idea what I'm getting into, really. So uh, yeah, let's pop this in, and hopefully it turns out to be really good.
All right, guys, so I just finished watching Man Push Cart. Um, and overall, I think it was a good movie. Um, the lead performance, his name is Ahmad Razvi. He was quite good. Um, it's shot very well. It has a it has a good color palette that really, like, makes the film feel very atmospheric of, like, downtown New York City. And there's, there's, there's some really, like, there's some really cool scenes in here. Like, some that are, like, like really honestly sad. And it's just, like, I, the thing is, when I was watching this, I, know, I felt a similarity to the film Sorry We Missed You that came out uh, last year. The stories, to me, are a little similar. I mean... You know, and sorry we missed you, a guy's, like, taking, like, a delivery courier job to support his family, and then more and more things just keep going wrong. Um, whereas the guy in this movie, um, his wife has been dead for a year, and he's trying to, you know, make money so that he can, like, you know, live with his son again. And he keeps on, like, you know, facing different hardships, and, like, he's always, like, hard up for money. The thing is, I didn't think this film had enough of the really... Like, as I said, it has some really, really good scenes in here, and this was another fault with Sorry We Missed You, is that I wish it had more really, really interesting scenes, and I wish this movie's, um, like, direction and structure was a lot more, like, at least a little more climactic when it needed to be, because I thought that this one... It, there, there's a lot of movies that I've seen where they have a very kind of, like, stagnant tone and it's like you know like you know you're just kind of like you know moving along moving along and then like kind of near the end it kind of something a little more like significant or climactic happens and you start to feel a little more so it, it is a bit of a slow burn I just I guess I just don't think the payoff was quite worth the setup like, not quite worth it. I still did um, enjoy the scenes that were climactic in here, because they, they were well done. I just expected a little bit more. As I said, I think I just wish this film had a bit of a, a different direction and structure. But overall, I do think this was a good movie. Um, I would definitely recommend it if you want to see... Um, especially like if you want to see this kind of a story, because this is about like a Pakistani guy who used to be a rock star in his home country, but he gave it up for the woman he loves. And now he's, you know, he's, he's pushing a, a food cart in New York City, just trying to make ends meet. But, you know, it's really showing how hard it is for the people who have to do this. And it's, it's an interesting look at it. As I said, it, it is a bit slow, but there's some scenes in here that are really good. Um, I might like this a bit more over time, because, like, the more I'm, like, thinking about it and talking about it, the more I like it. Um, at the moment, I would give this a 3 out of 5. I could see this increasing to a 3.5 over time, but, um, uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on Man Push Cart, and thank you guys for watching the third episode of Criterion Roulette. I might do episode 4 a little bit sooner, because I had to order these Criterions from Unobstructed View, because they were having a... 30% off sale for the month of May, so, um, and, it's, and obviously with, that's not Amazon Prime, so it's not, like, really quick shipping, it took a little bit longer, so, because I had to wait a little longer for these, I might end up doing episode four sooner than expected, but I'm not quite sure. I always have so much fun doing these, I love, you know, getting to see different kinds of movies, you know, ones that I would normally, like, never even think twice about or even hear about, and I get to see them, and, you know, sometimes they work out, sometimes not, but that's part of the fun. Um, anyway, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more content. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And remember, you guys, whenever recording sound, say no to drugs.